that's a little too spooky. I like that. APC kitty cat. I feel you, dog. Start licking your paws. I'm out. <laughs> I feel that, that's man. That's the type of guy. <laughs> that's some 4 a.m. activity. Right yeah, there. for sure. I'm definitely looking at my paws. It's not this evening. This, this evening. Uh, we got a special guest in the building, my good friend, Teresa Escobedo. What to do? Great artist, great tattooer, great person. Yeah, I feel like art, artist sums it up. Appreciate you know, that. Yeah. Tattooing, tattooer wouldn't do it justice. It's yeah, all, all out artists. You're sick. Appreciate it. Yeah. So Stoked we, to be here. Very we fun. appreciate you and I'm your glad time. it finally happened. I know. Yeah, well, I'm super down to be invited. Yeah. Yeah, we was talking about it for a minute, for real. I'm into it. I've clocked a lot of hours of conversation tattooing, y'all. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yo, I was sitting, like before I before I knew you, I'm like, how the fuck these niggas, Nate and Kurt, getting tattoos every fucking week, bro? <laughs> hey, I, the, the time came in, I would say that we're about like 30 seconds in the conversation, so we can bring up Texas now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, we'll we'll get to that right away, though. So first of all, we got to get the the regular stuff out of the way. Uh, what's the Instagram handle so people know how oh, to follow that's you? How that goes. You might want to spell yours too. Sure, sure. <laughs> <laughs> we'll uh, spell it out for these guys. It's uh, T H E R E S O. Wait. A. That, yeah, you fucked a. it up. <laughs> Run it back. <laughs> All right, that uh, espresso is he's working out. It's Teresa Escobedo and it's phonetic, so E S C O B E D O. And Teresa with an H. Yeah, follow that for all the all the art posts, uh, making, so, making paper mache, tattoo stuff. Everything's on Very there. Very cool shit. Cool. Yeah, and I'm then, in Chicago right now, so hit me up. Yeah. I feel like we've uh, spent a lot of hours talking, but we never, I don't even really know this. Can you take us back to, to where you're from? Yeah, uh, easy. So I'm from San Antonio originally, spent some time in Austin, traveled a bit, moved around a lot, spent brief times in St. Louis and New York, and I've been in Chicago for five years. All good. Hell yeah. Yeah, it's tight, dude. I love Chicago. So sick. I moved here the day that I visited, so never left. That's what's up, yo. That's crazy. It didn't take long for us to link up. Yeah. Yeah, we met through Temple of Angels, guys. Rob. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Damn. Shout out to Rob <laughs> Glenn. About that. Shout out to Rob Glenn. I saw him. Yeah, I met you at, uh, at Brick a Brack. Brick a Brack, yeah. which is now, shout out my homie, uh, my old roommate, Blake. He turned it into Signal Records. It's like a, more of an exclusive, rare records. And really? Oh, yeah. It, down, it opened dude. in that same location. Yeah. yeah, yeah. What, it's six what, kind of, that. what kind of shit do they have? Dude, he's nerdy too. His dad brought him up with a lot of records. So when we lived together, we shared the upstairs of the house and it was just like hearing the tape rip off. But uh, yeah, just exclusive rarities and he knows what he's talking about. Cool. So Japanese hardcore and then Ooh, also like, so like really that? good African music, super rare shit. They had this crazy rare witch album from like, I don't know, seven. That's sick. Yeah. I'm like starting my like Dude. record collection. I don't need oh. another. Expe- I don't need another expensive Dude, habit. Dude, I'm but, leaving it. I can't. That but, shit is a pain to move. Yeah. 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 Until you find where you're trying to be for a while, collecting records is tough. Yeah. yeah. Hauling I got up bitches to prove. around is crazy. Yeah, yeah. I had a few DJ roommates in the past. I'm like, we be moving them. I'm like, bro, I can't carry on to this shit. Yeah. Like, you gonna have to leave some of this shit. I don't know. I got nothing to prove. When yeah. I walk into like. A man's apartment, and it's like a wall and a half. I'm like, what's up? Like, I'm like, what are you, what's, what's inside there you're trying to buy off? Yeah. <laughs> no, I, it's I, 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 appreciate, I appreciate that, though. They, these, are, these are just nerds. You're looking through people's records, like, they got this on Apple Music, they got this. <laughs> Straight up, dude. I'm like, that's like 14 crates in the, in the U.S.? Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> I'm just like, I'm just collecting shit that, like, like very, like I, I have like you know like Diamond Life by Sade or like you know solid yeah, yeah like essentials shit like that. Only. I'm, yeah. not, I'm not about to do a wall full of shit. Yeah, you know yeah. What I mean, I have like the first Discharge live album. I need that solid. You know, because right, like, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, like a, a yeah. lot of collectors just just a lot of times they just take what people give them. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. They just end up having a lot of shit that they don't yeah. even, they haven't even gone through yet. Like thrifting shit. Yeah, you know I, what I, mean? I want mm-hmm. one thing from all of my favorite bands, and I'm cool. You know? Yeah, I've narrowed it down. I'm more of a tapes guy these days because yeah. it's easier. Plus, like, when you want to buy something from the band, I'm like, ah, oh, fuck, I don't wear the shirt. I can get a tape, and that's yeah. this big versus this big. Yeah, the moment you realize if you really want to wear the shirt or not is a beautiful moment. Yeah. Because yeah. it really cuts down on all the fucking t-shirts at your house. You're like, why do I? It's, it's, a, it's a mess shit. in my crib, man. Tell me about it. <laughs> mess. I'm so, I have so many clothes, man. You're so supportive. Yeah, I'm, so, I'm such a rocker. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, who am I today? You really are. <laughs> So to, to kind of circle back to San Antonio, how did you, or when, I guess, did you get into art? 
Uh, we're winning right now, 24 to 12. Let me point that out right now. Oh, also, let me point out that... <laughs> also, Don't get him started. Let me like point out that DeMar DeRozan... Oh, way before. DeMar yeah. DeRozan has one more point to score before his 20,000th point. Oh, wow. shit, that's a monumental and He's about moment. to score oh, right now. No. Dang, there it goes. Overtime DeMar DeRozan, 20,001 20, points. You see it on the so screen. Fine. Let's go. Yeah, dude. Walking away with that Joker laugh. We love it. Yeah, in case y'all don't know, we're watching the uh, Bulls San Antonio become, Spurs game. So. Demar Derozan just became Perry and the, Teresa are beefing right now. De, Demar I Derozan mean, just we became. We should be beefing. Yeah. He just became the 50th player in history to score 20,000 points. Yeah, Shout out Demar solid. Derozan. Give him his yo. moment, and also pretty crazy to do it in San Antonio, the team he just left. Yeah, the team he just <laughs> left for real. <laughs> Dude, he's, he's a good one though. I like him. The crowd's like, all right, player. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but yeah, so. No, the, then treat him like a wife. But yeah, so like, uh, yeah, walk, walk us through your art story. Like, what, what, what's like, what made you get into it? Like, what are some of your influences? You know what I'm saying? Yeah, uh, shit. Uh, how do you talk? I talk about this stuff so often with tattooing that sometimes it kind of becomes like, a, where, to, where do I start? Uh, I'm doing art forever. Did the punk thing for so long, and I was just doing a lot of flyers for a while, booking shows real young in Texas, and then... That really got it going, I'd say. And then fucked off for a minute. Um, sorry, excuse me. First time. Uh, I fucked off for a minute. Definitely just like traveled, lived a lot of different places, and the art slowed down during that time. But honestly, just in that art thing to be mentioned, I always wanted a tattoo. That was the whole point, even. Mm -hmm. I, my art style changed dramatically around like 20, maybe 19, just because everything was bold lines, everything could be tattooed. And uh, so I was hoping it was coming. It just came about a decade later. Nice. <laughs> yeah, like it, it's crazy. Like, uh, like for me personally, like when I was a kid, like I always used to want to be an artist. Like even through like high school and college, I'm like, I want to be an artist. And like Same. when I step back nowadays and I look at shit that like I didn't do, I'm like, damn, I'm actually doing that Dude, for real. real. Yeah, you know man, what I'm saying? That shit. Yeah, yo, like I love that shit, yo. Like, uh, so, so look, so you just started tattooing in 2019? Uh, yeah, I started in 2020. I did some stick and pokes here and there just mm -hmm. to get started. But uh, the tattooing thing's kind of a separate chapter. I uh, moved here about five years ago, moved into that house that I mentioned with uh, Blake and the records and all that with a whole bunch of people. And Kyle Butler, who owns Red Devil, and my homie Sima mm -hmm. were living there at the time, destroying this brand new at the time DIY tattooing. Like, absolutely all the legends tattooed out of their house and taught themselves. But 2018, I'm 26. I've been get, trying to get an apprenticeship for 10 years, you know, following all the rules and mm. whatnot. And I just saw them killing it and just did it themselves that over time living with them, I guess the wall kind of broke down. And then our mutual homie Miranda was like, dude, I'll shout walk you through Miranda. it. Shout out Miranda. Big Seriously. shout out Miranda. Absolutely. Love you. Yeah, go get tattooed. Uh, but yeah, you know, it's full circle. Kyle and uh, Miranda own a tattoo shop, which is incredible. I got started and I am tattooing. I started tattooing out of the house that Kyle was learning out of and Seema learned out of. Seema's out in New York now. But uh, yeah, I would definitely give those three people my start for sure. And it felt crazy to kind of say, fuck it. Yeah. And yeah, sometimes, start. sometimes you just got to go get it. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Like, there's a lot of like. This, we're in like a special time right now that you could really go go and like attack anything that you want to do, like just start doing it type yeah. shit. Like yeah. information's out there. It's yeah, crazy. Like, they did true. the work already, yeah. and it's just like now you have to put the work in. Yeah, you know? and, and yeah. it's with everything, with music, with sports, and anything. Like, but before it used to be like a path that you used to have to follow. Like, like we watching basketball right now. Before you used to have to go to college and then and then get drafted to the league. You know what I'm saying? With music, you used to have to like go through a label and do all yeah. of that shit. And when you what you was just saying that. Like, like y'all just start tattooing at the crib. Like yeah. you're trying to find an apprenticeship, but like, yeah, you could just, if you want that shit, just go do it yeah, for real. A, yeah. The reason that you aren't what you are is, I can't remember this great Alan, Alan Watts quote though, but basically the reason that you aren't what you are is because you're not doing it. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And it's just to break that down. It's, you have a certain amount of time to put your, your time into. And I'm just grateful that like 10 years later of drawing, dude, I was, I was broke the whole fucking time. Yeah. I was a bartender the whole fucking time, like mm -hmm. waitressing the whole time. <laughs> yeah. That's what I think is sick about your story, though, that you aspired to be a tattooer. I think a lot of people get to a point where they're doing art and they're like, how do I monetize this? Yeah. Yeah. And tattooing is a good way to monetize art versus yeah. 
trying to sell art. I have that. Selling art's super hard. Getting people to get tattooed is a little easier when, you know, because a lot of people want access to it. A lot of people feel like, oh, I got these paintings. They're like, how much is the painting? And they don't understand why it's 400, 500, 600 dollars, you know? Yeah. No, yeah. It's, it's also. Which is crazy. A different time. This is a different time than three years ago. 100% when yeah, it comes to tattooing yeah. and people getting excited and it's mm-hmm. sick that people are into it. But uh, I don't know. I just wanted to be invited to the club. That's like some old, I'm just that age where whenever I first started getting tattooed, it was like, you want to get mm-hmm. invited. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And pay your dues even. There's treats. Yeah. Think like anything, it's like a trade. Just takes a lot of time and Lord knows I have so much to learn still. Yeah, I think any of the super successful tattooers, if you really talk to them in depth, I'm sure none of it was handed to any of them. Oh, you know, absolutely. They had to go Hopefully through not. the fucking yeah. ground, you know. And also, I don't know, I have a little high horse I go on some with tattooings. Um, and even Miranda really introduced this like to me, but one, I'm so grateful I started tattooing at 29 versus the 19-year-old that yeah. wanted to start tattooing. I feel like, a, oh, we got, oh, sorry, game's on. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's all right, we're leading. Um, but I feel like it's a lot, oh, I lost my train of thought, sorry, guys. No, it's all here. great, it's all great. <laughs> yeah, yo, you, you just got to go do that shit for real, like. Uh, oh, sorry, the age thing, starting later. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, I don't know. I needed to fuck around and find out a little bit, get humbled. I definitely didn't even, I didn't like traditional tattoos whenever I was in my 20s. I had no respect for the history. I looked at it in this way that it was like, oh, these white guys, like they, they're, <laughs> they, they, they've been keep keeping this forever and blah, blah, You know what I mean? Yeah, and I wasn't uh-huh. getting those tattoos. And great, so gratefully, like living with Kyle and Seema and people that were just so excited about tattooing in every element. Yeah. I found this completely new respect and just like fell in love with Ed Hardy and fell in love with Tom DeVita and all these like outsiders and like they did the work, man. I've res- I, and I really wish a lot of younger kids would take a minute to take a beat on that because I definitely should have yeah. younger. Yeah, it's solid. It's badassery. Yeah, I think, think it's just you- about knowing the whole three like the whole three sixty of your craft mm-hmm. versus. Whether you get into it for a, like a niche thing you like, learning all of it is good. Yeah, uh, and then, then you're like a full like encompassed tattooer. Yeah. Where yeah. a lot of people find their niche lane. People go to people for black and gray, like you yeah. know, single needle. But I'm sure all those people at one point tattooed everything you, just to the good figure ones. it out. You know? <laughs> yeah. Do you feel like kids are not doing their research? Um. And 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 I'll agree with that, but I'm not necessarily like upset with it. It's understandable. Yeah. Um, it totally makes sense. There's so much content and there's so many amazing tattooers. It's yeah. really easy to find what you're into. For sure. But I think they're missing an opportunity, for sure. I mm-hmm. think they're missing a beautiful world of history. And to me, my little like old man soapbox is like, don't you love it? Like, don't you love <laughs> it? Like, why wouldn't you learn everything you can? Why wouldn't you be covered in tattoos? You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. That's uh, the only thing that throws me off. I feel because I feel the same way about music for real. Like, yeah, I like right. all the like like the young kid like SoundCloud rap shit. But I'm like, don't y'all like the Ghetto Boys too? Yeah. Like, don't y'all <laughs> like? You know what I'm saying? But okay. like, yeah, I'll be whatever. Go get it. Go. Life's not linear. Hopefully, but, we'll find them when they. But that's how, that's how shit progressed though. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Yeah, true. But I mean, it, I think that separates uh, liking something from loving something. Thing. When you're True. you love when you love something, you're gonna go find all the back history of it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like I was at the park the other day chilling, and this older dude walked by, and he's like, "You're way too young to know about Roxy music." And I was like, "Hey, I'm not." <laughs> and B, like, if you really love music, you're gonna go right, back yeah. and check the yeah. Old what shit. are we talking yeah. about? Where, where better did like yeah. than never. Yeah. You didn't. I didn't come out of the room listening to fucking Grandmaster Flash. Yeah. Dude, it, it's back up off me. <laughs> and the thing is, we're also just getting old. Now we're just complaining. Some of the <laughs> most of the now best eras. Some stupid shit like that. Yeah. Say some stupid shit like that to me. Most of the best eras of music are past eras. Yeah. You know, not to like like disregard any music now, but in 2050, people aren't going to be listening to like Lil Uzi Vert. It's just not going to happen. <laughs> no, no, I don't think that Timeless. at all, bro. Uh, we're not, all right, I'm just going to take that, that back. I'm not going down this road. Yeah, all your friends are going to be dead anyway, yeah. so yeah. he's going to be like, there you go. <laughs> that is cap. I love music. <laughs> like the way people listen to like Bowie, Sabbath, Lou Reed, and shit like that. That's yeah. not going to happen with a lot that's of this arguable. shit. I would that say, will, I think the reason that will happen with Lou Uzi. No, it's not. Dude. I don't know if it yes, will. It will. I'm not I, going down these roads with him anymore. <laughs> no, <laughs> no. Like, yeah, we got a guest. We got a no, guest. Let's talk about it. No, we got a guest today. <laughs> I will say my point on that this though is, is that there's just a shit ton of content, so it wouldn't even be their fault. It's like it just will be more 
niche for different groups. Like, it's going to be smaller because there's going to be 70 fucking billion of us on the planet. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, there's a ton of content. And 70 but fucking billion SoundCloud rappers. Like, you and I talk about a lot. Everything's so accessible now. Yeah. Like, back in the day, you know, just to, like, I guess refer to music, I would find music because people had it in their, like, LimeWire folder. And I'd be like, oh, you like this album. You probably like this album. Yeah. So it was harder to Glory find. Days. Now with, like, the internet and Apple Music, you can just look up whatever the fuck you want to look up. Mm -hmm. You know, like, yeah. oh, I want to check this band. You don't have to go download it. Hope nobody fucking disconnects the internet Dude, while it's downloading. I was on a TikTok hole till like, 3 a.m. last Ooh. night. <laughs> I'm a 31-year-old on TikTok now. No, <laughs> no low-key, for a long time, I was anti-TikTok. I love it. I was it. an old-ass man, and I was like, I'm not it. going on TikTok. But when I, <laughs> like, stories. I was like, you know what, let me start. Because I was like, maybe I should get in and get my music discovered and shit. You know, yeah. know what I'm saying? So I started fucking around with it. You know, TikTok is actually a superior Platformed in Instagram, bro. Dude, and it's talking about like you're saying everything's accessible. I still won't download it. <laughs> you download your TikToks? I don't. I know. I said I still you won't can download them TikTok. Into the I can't. It's it. like everything that you be on Instagram and you be like, I wish Instagram did this. TikTok does it. I think it's <laughs> yeah. just to find things. For me, mine's all rigged up to be like about weird, interesting history facts, and then like <laughs> like a Thea like dancing in the kitchen or getting pranked by her kid. You know what I mean? Yeah. That's like joy to me. <laughs> yeah, but that's the thing on TikTok. Like, it's easier to find shit. Yeah. Like, you can just go and search and like type some shit in. Yeah. You know I what can I'm segue saying? this into tattooing if you want a little Let's too. Let's go. Because yeah, go I was going to say, I feel like one, another thing when I say it's just like a, dis it's just disappointing that they're missing this opportunity. It's like when you, and I've talked to you a lot about, both y'all about this a lot, um, for me, I really should say early on to this uh, app or whatever that I've only been tattooing for less than two years. I am more of someone who does art and I'm just starting to tattoo. I'm super grateful, but I'm not gonna act like I know. But one thing I do know and that I'm really gratified that I learned is that I travel and I do a lot of walk-in opportunities as much as I can. And yeah. what I talk about all the time is it's, it's just such a bummer. If you're on Instagram, you're a tattooer, you're getting the success, you're loving it, and you're just doing your art, tattooing people that follow you. That feels so disconnected and, and, and truly like not paying the due of the honor of the position. Mm -hmm. That we get this opportunity to actually like these crazy moments where you give someone a tattoo that is so impactful and emotional and you're humbled by it, you know what I mean? You're like, that's an experience. This might be the only tattoo that this person gets. And we think about it so like, $50, please book, book, book. I'm booking, I'm booking. Like, it's just, it's, we've become so drawn to that that it's like, one, you'll make your money if you go work at a walk-in shop and serve the people and you'll learn a lot and you'll pay your dues. Or you could do the Instagram thing that's going to fade out in about three years. Mm -hmm. yeah, oh, word. Yeah, you yeah. know? Where it's just going to be there's so many and they don't get afforded and everybody got so many tattoos all at once. And then, you know, it's, it, tattoos are fads. They always have, well, they're not fads. <laughs> they're a lifetime. But they do go in fads and... Even being someone that's been getting tattooed for, you know, close to 15 years, I'm like, okay, I see how that works, you know? Yeah. It comes mm -hmm. in these rotations, so it's just how life is. But now we throw this element of technology, and I mean, I always say I don't think there would be the opportunities I have now if it wasn't for Instagram, which is nuts. Yeah, what that's I think crazy. one yeah. thing that's cool about the tattoo culture is uh, they let people stay relevant for a long time. They let people <laughs> age and still be really popular. Like yeah. yesterday, you and I were talking about Mr. Cartoon. He's been tattooing sure. forever. Yeah. And people still seek that out. Yeah, he's Whereas, on Modelo commercials now. <laughs> yeah, I know. Oh, he's, he's getting money. Yeah. Like, yeah. But, uh, that's so crazy. I forgot about that. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah they, gonna, they probably go for play him. that bitch. They play that bitch all the time. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's a Modelo commercial right now. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to the best beer. Shout out to the best beer in the world, Modelo. That's so funny. That's pretty good. <laughs> Yeah, but a lot of like uh, industries, you get a little window where you're very, you're popular for this amount of time, then it's over for you. But I think in yeah. tattooing, you get to like age with it, and people still follow you. To make a longevity of that is to work at a shop. Yeah, to totally. truly have that. And then something I really hope for, as I burp off the mic, um, something I do hope for is this potential to make t walk in tattoo shops. Like I love Red Devil. Like they knew that they had to make it a walk in shop. Like that is just. Because what <laughs> ends up happening sometimes, I'm sorry I'm repeating myself because we've talked about this before, but a lot of tattooers will open these studios because so many people are used to being tattooed in studios now. It's a really common thing. And it's this privatized relationship, this private like thing, but then they're trying to make these spaces more inclusive, yet 
they're not tattooing the neighbors and the neighborhood that they're <laughs> yeah. making yeah. a new yeah. little shop, you yeah, know? you got to get back to the commu- community. Absolutely. You feel me? Like, ultimately, motherfuckers are allowing you to be there. Because you all we're going to do is polarize crazy, like, everything about the country and every, you know? It's like, we literally are polarizing so different. So now I'll have clients who have never been tattooed in a shop before, right? And there's this, like, machismo, and there's this idea, this, like, stereotype that shops are scary, mean, disrespectful, you know, name the list. If these new, amazing, insightful, young tattooers start spending time at these shops, you know, those six-year-old guys, 50-year-old guys, they're going to pick up. They're, they fucking know what it's like to be the outsiders. Yeah. Like, they get it. They want to tattoo the queer community. They get it. But we just, it's this scary thing. And then it's going to be the, the daisy shop. And then the mean tattoo shop. <laughs> you know I, mean? yeah. I feel like tattoo shops get the same stigma as skate shops. Where yeah. people are all their fucking yeah. assholes in there, da da da. I don't, I'm scared to go in there. Like Zoomies which, versus Uprise. <laughs> which one can I walk into and get yeah. a board at? Yeah, and, and one is they're forced to be customer service friendly because they're a corporation. And one's independently owned. But the and customer is, service friendly. <laughs> yeah, yeah once, you wa- once you walk in there, like... People just let word of mouth fuck with them way too hard. Yeah. Like, oh, it's a weird environment. Just you should just go check it out. And yeah. people see how you be feel. intimidated and shit when they not. You know what I'm saying? When yeah. they new to shit, they be intimidated Absolutely. and shit. And I like, remember not tipping my first like three tattoos. <laughs> 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 I just didn't know. I had no yeah. idea. Yeah, exactly. you left and they're all like, no, they were like, bitch is 17 and she lied about her age. <laughs> 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 yeah. That's wild. No, I mean, but it, it's you can see see what uh, you can see why I be. Intimidating because yeah. like, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. to a person that like ain't got no tattoos or like don't skate and shit, like, yeah. well, it's just the thing you, if you don't know about something, it's your first time, but that, that first time also leaves a huge impression on yeah. you. Yeah. yeah, so that's definitely. why it's the most important. Not like you got to go out of your way, but if someone walks in and you know, like, they're just getting their first board, yeah. maybe they're getting their first tattoo. Just like be a little more patient with them, you yeah. know? Yeah. yeah. Because th- that person's probably gonna be a repeat right. customer, mm-hmm. you know? And yeah. to be real, it's not to not mention there are shitty asshole tattooers out there. They the, just are. They're shitty know? asshole but everything. <laughs> they don't really last yeah. very long these days, that's yeah, for, sure. for sure. So I'm gonna let that work its course. Is that shit dead? Like, that, nah, that, they're still out there. It's they're still out there. Weird, but, man. They just like rebrand and then they go to like Grand Rapids or something. Uh, okay. If it's been the same booth in a stupid ass place. It's wild. Or some of them relish in it. I won't even. Give them the courtesy to drop names, but now they're out. Nah, there. run it. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, they don't deserve the time. You know what's funny is that I be I feel like people that uh, don't have a lot of tattoos or don't get tattoos, like they always want their tattoo to like mean something very important. Yeah, and like you got it, like Miami, appreciate Miami that. Shit. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Because like I be telling people like that don't get tattooed. I be like I be going pulling up to the shop. I never know what I'm gonna get <laughs> yeah. before I get there. Well, yeah. running back <laughs> to Ed Hardy though, like. Again, why we got to appreciate these things is what he did is he went out to Japan and he put the work in when nobody was doing this shit. Nobody, no American tattooer was going there. And he appreciated the custom idea. American tattoos never had custom tattoos till he came back. And his first card that he ever had was like, uh, make your dreams reality. And that idea is kind of more of an Americanized thing now. It's like anything you want. Which puts a pretty crazy standard on a tattoo where you're like, I got to translate this to yeah. like look good in 50 years. But cool. Challenge accepted. You know what I yeah. mean? Yeah. Yeah. And the other side of that that's really cool, though, is that a lot of flash that we still see today is from that era. So a lot oh, yeah. of shit's like transcended so many generations yep. where people are still getting the same tattoo people were 45, 50 years ago, which is mm. sick as fuck if yeah, you think about it. Yeah, like if I it think works, that, it works, I man. think that shit is dope for real. It like, is. It's the like, sickest. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. I, like we have a, a, a community, a secret society of like niggas in Chicago with Panthers tattooed on our hands. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like respect, man. Like, yeah, like, it's I, fucking I, Chicago. Yeah, <laughs> I, ain't even, I ain't even know that shit. I get that shit and then I just start meeting mad people. Jorge got one. Yeah, I didn't, uh, there it is. We didn't Honestly, even know. I've been planning what? <laughs> <laughs> we didn't even know for real. Every time they'd be like, oh yeah, you in the club. Like, yeah, that's tight. That's tight. In uh, San Antonio, like, yeah. going up, if you have the Spurs logo, it's like gang Y'all shit. Y'all APC kitties too. Yeah, I, I, think that, I think that shit is dope for real. Like, when I see a motherfucker with, a, with like, some same shit that I get. Yeah, right, right, right. Like seeing it over. Like, like yeah, a I dragon see. never gets fucking old. Yeah, like that yeah. shit rocks. Yeah. Yeah, yo. Like I, I want to get a spider web on my yeah. arm. And like Kurt was like, don't get a spider web. Get something different. But like, I kind of like that everybody got a spider web on their arm. Like, it looks good. Me too. It looks good, <laughs> good. Yeah. Spider webs look so ill. Yeah. It's cool though, too. Like you said, when you don't know what you're going to get and you're kind of just going to artists at this point, like there is a 50% rate of people that really are just 
want something of yours, mm -hmm. which is humbling and insane. You know what yeah. I mean? Mm -hmm. But at the same time, you're probably going to get a better tattoo because it's like what they're, they know, what they do. Uh -huh. You know what I mean? And so collecting is a really exciting thing too mm, yeah that, that's how all. i feel like i feel like it's collecting like pieces from my people you know what yeah, i'm saying yeah yeah so i, I don't have to move them around like records <laughs> like yeah just come with me <laughs> yeah full yeah. circle and we, we don't have to fully relate this to tattooing because i know you do a lot of commissions as well do you do you like it more when someone comes to you and wants like your lane or do you like when people make you step out of your lane uh, and this is just speaking from my experience, not like as every illustrator or something thinks, but I kind of have worked long enough at this point that I have like established a style. And since I do a lot of like hardcore and metal band stuff for merch, which I don't want to be exclusive to that. It's just what I get asked the most. Um, You're killing it in that world though. Thanks sure. dog. Yeah. I've got I, so many more things I want to do, Yeah, but, uh, I definitely feel like Hey. Uh, What's up, deep dub? I was like, hey, those lashes are sick. Yeah, it looks great. I like the leather jacket. Uh, I don't know. I forgot what I was saying. Oh, oh, well, commission shit. Yeah. Um, yeah, I don't want to really limit you. We were talking about like music and everybody kind of ventures in different fields and whatnot. I don't know a single tattooer that just does tattoos. Like they've got some sort of ceramic thing. They've got some sort of, you know, there's always mm -hmm. like a side medium that they're into. Yeah. Like, if, I mean, they're all painters pretty much at this point, too. But, um, yeah, I never want to stop doing design work necessarily. You, the question I'm thinking, remember now, <laughs> okay. Yeah, I do like when people kind of give, a, like, pros, so like, kind of like, hey, like, this is a theme, or this is the name of the album, or this is, like, whatever, you know? And I can go from there, but when someone says, like, do whatever you want, that freaks me out a bit. Yeah, yo, for real. Because <laughs> then I have to pre present, like, seven ideas, you know what I mean? And mm -hmm. then I don't really know what they're going to choose, but... Yeah, we kind of learned that the hard way with one of, one of my friends back in the day. We were trying to do some merch with them, and we, we, we gave him this idea, and it was totally out of his wheelhouse, and he gave us, like, two or three drafts, and we were like, no, 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 and he finally was like, because we, like, skated together. We were homies. He's like, I'm just going to give you your money back. This just isn't my style I've, done, I've definitely been there. Done a few know. times. It, and it's, it's fair to do it. Like, it's exhausting, and it takes so much time, you know? I was doing like sixty dollar t-shirts up until like two years ago, <laughs> and I'm like, I can't spend three days on this shit. Like, not even three days, like fully three days of work beyond mm -hmm. the ideas, you know? Yeah, definitely. Um, what like do you think just from knowing and growing up in that scene, that's how you started doing a lot of the hardcore definitely. band merch? Yeah, yeah, that's a good start though, because that'll get your name out there a lot. I mean, it's just mm -hmm. them boys. Honestly, I'm just proud of everybody else because it's not yeah. like they were a big ass band when we were homies back in. You know, 10 years ago, everybody else has been putting the work in, too, and we kind of just all grow up together. Mm -hmm. It's been sick, and it's crazy because we all spread out, and, like, my friends from Texas meet my friends from L.A. and out there in a bit. You know, it's just it gets closer and closer, it's especially very, to have the opportunity. Yeah, it's very cool. I feel like coming up through the scene, when you come up through the scene, it make you be more, it make you be more, like, divert. You make, like, yeah. you got to do everything. Yeah. You know what yeah. I'm saying? For real, and then, like, preps you. So like how to how to approach a design versus how to approach a tattoo versus yeah. how to approach a something. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Or even how to like uh how to like get shit done, you know what I'm saying? Right, Printing right. and shit. Like like niggas have to go get their shit yeah. printed at fucking any you, you know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, you have to learn. Like it make you have to yeah. tap in and be knowledgeable about yeah. all of them different type things. Exactly. Right? Yeah, and it kinda goes of roll back to like don't you love it? You know, yes. like, what, if you don't, if yes, you love absolutely. it, why would, you know, you mm -hmm. just learn all these different things. And then as we get older, people will specialize in their craft. And so now I got my shirt guy, you know, yeah. does this screen printing thing. And exactly. then, you know, I got this other, you know, this band that's been killing it. And they hit me up like a day before for a design, <laughs> but I drew out seven designs for that other band so I can show them mm -hmm. the leftovers. Yeah. You know? mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, definitely. It's, I'm trying to figure it out, man. The balance is wild. I actually really want to get uh, more into this. So after the, the break song, we're going to get back into this topic. Cool. But we're going to get into the, the hot shit of the week. This uh, is our brother pretty much. Torsten put out a Thomas Harvey EP. It's called Inside My Head. Check that out on all DSPs and Bandcamp. Woo-wee.
All right, that was Thomas Harvey with Inside My Head. Check out that uh, EP on all DSPs. And shout out to the homie. Triple Hammer Records out of Buffalo, New York. They got a lot of shit coming out. They're doing physicals of everything, so follow Hell them yeah. on the Instagram and all that, all that silly shit. But like yeah. I said, I wanted to uh, get back into what we were talking about. I did have a question for you. So you obviously grew up drawing pencil to paper, you know, and all that thing. What was it like transitioning to making graphics? And having to do it on a computer, like digitally. Still hella transitioning, dude. I can't fucking draw with an iPad. I'm trying. I'm <laughs> trying. I have to. I have to. It makes so much sense for this industry, but I still paper, pencil. Uh, the graphics thing, yeah. I got Photoshop at 28, three years ago. And I look back on those graphics three years ago when they were rough. But it's advice I got a long time ago from a friend was just fuck with it. Just Hell keep like yeah. playing around constantly look at other people's designs you know what i mean bill connor's here is like the king of the graphics here and i definitely been following his work for like 10 years but the way his illustration translates to graphics i've you know i just i just watch my friends do it you know what i mean oh yeah so are you yeah. still hand drawing and then scanning it in essentially yeah oh, for the damn. most part almost always yeah um so to kind of play off that question what was it like going from uh paper to pencil to paper to machine to skin <laughs> yeah it's wild uh a lot of just different learning curves for sure um with tattooing i do feel like i have a little bit of an advantage because i am heavily tattooed before i started tattooing and so i asked a lot of questions then and i was able to kind of know and just entry level kind of mm -hmm. situation <laughs> um but uh yeah they're all pretty different mediums i mean um Feel like i'm making i'm saying this myself but i also do the paper mache thing too and that's i feel like all coming back down to elementary school art classes because they kind <laughs> right, of like though. you know the public school they like do they teach you every visual art you mm -hmm. know so you have like little introductions to things like remember like etching like you know etching now like when you're in a new ceramics and yeah, you score yeah. something isn't yeah. it crazy how you know how to score a yeah, ceramic? yeah that's crazy like yeah <laughs> like they did they do all right they, they need to cover a lot i remember mm. i uh did screen printing in high school too I was like, yeah, really? Yeah, yeah, that's sick. I, I don't think I have that anymore. <laughs> I made myself a Poison the Well shirt. Oh, damn, that's sick. <laughs> damn, respect. You're like, the used. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, but distance makes the heart grow fonder oh, on the back. Oh, damn. It's hard. Solid, solid. <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah, we had that printed. too. I remember my homie made a bright eye shirt and I was all like jealous. Damn. I was like, damn. Yeah, this is one on one player. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. Like, yeah, you got this. Pretty sure he's like, call up. Oh, yeah, because on, on the back it just said, no lies, just love. I was like, that's so hard. <laughs> I was like, I need that shit. That's so hard. You start crying. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, like low key, sometimes you be in school, they be uh, they be teaching you like the elements and principles of art and shit. And then like later in life, I'll be like, damn, these really is elements, yo. Yeah, I didn't teach anything with math away from me, but I remember how to like turn a wheel, you know? <laughs> yeah, and I was talking about like when they be like balance and like uh, rhythm. Yeah. And, like, you know what I'm saying? What Dude, the paper mache thing straight up. Is a absolute Texas, like, I grew up in Texas. This is what we learned in elementary yeah, school. Yeah, 100%. Because <laughs> there's that folk art, you know what yeah. I mean? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So when I started doing it again in, like, the pandemic, I'm like, I'm broke as shit, and this is free. This yeah. is yeah. newspaper. I, I meant to ask you, like, I forgot the process. We definitely had to. You got this. To. It's come right back yeah. to you. It's just flour water, uh -huh. little wheat paste mixture there, which uh -huh. ratios are up to you. The tissue paper, uh -huh. remember the tissue paper? Yeah, I do. And then so you do the, your little ball and then you wrap it with the tissue paper. That's that. right. And then you do it like over and over again. And then you, if you want, you can put newspaper if it's thicker and then you start the- The painting the process. The painting process yeah. basically, painting process. Yeah. 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 But a lot of time it takes, that's for yeah, sure. Yeah, we did that a lot. I, I think don't know why, that, why, is, why do you think it's like a Texas thing? Mexicans. Were you, yeah. Oh dude, I fucking yeah. hold it down to our people. I feel like it's, <laughs> Do you remember like going south, like San Antonio and stuff? It's like there's the bottle cap art, you yeah, know? Yeah, it's yeah. like, and then there's like, 
paper mache, and then there's the um, malag uh, malagros, which is like the tin art. And mm -hmm. in school, they would teach us with a can, like you'd break the can up yeah, and then, like, I stemple that. That's like some Texas shit. Yeah. But all of that is it essentially free you know what i mean yeah. to make like it's a poor man's art and that is folk art you know yeah. to its definition i mean not really but just making things out of what you have because you have to yeah. not because you have the materials but because it's just you want to see something beautiful yeah you know? mm -hmm. yeah, and, yeah in such a dark place when i go back to texas ways. some of my my san antonian friends and all that they're like dude i'm just like it's what you're doing is cool, but I'm just like sick of seeing it because I see it everywhere. And I'm like, dude, you come up here and one of those like like little mask or something, like they, you know, they sell for all this money. It's it's I like the colors a lot. Yeah. I feel like it just defines that part of the country. Yeah, definitely. Do you think that's kinda you and I have this conversation a lot. Do you think that's what, what kind of drew you to like I always refer to it as East LA kind of Cholo style tattooing, like thin line, um, black yeah. and gray stuff. I would refer to it more as like um, Chicano art. Uh, yeah, definitely was a huge influence growing up in San Antonio. Like the hardest fucking Theo's out there with like the gray and black tattoos. It looks so sick. But you could throw a rock in San Antonio back in the day and someone could do script better than like half of these, myself of course included, because they do it every day because it's baby, they go call them back to the walking shops. Yeah. But it's essentially there, yeah. If I have an opportunity to kind of talk about that, I feel like one thing a lot of young tattooers are missing out on is because black and gray tattoos right now are the most popular tattoo. It's just everybody loves a little black and gray tattoo. And it doesn't feel like due diligence to make create that kind of art and not inform yourself of its origins and like honor and respect the incarcerated people like that <laughs> created this folk art out of baby oil and fucking a like cassette player and a guitar string yeah they like, weren't getting the colors in that bitch. you know and then <laughs> let me get a magenta and, just, like, and it's shit that it looks cool <laughs> yeah yeah Dude, and they're doing like a full fucking body piece yeah, like yeah, it's insane sure. yeah. and it's taking like it's a guitar string like, yeah, like, yeah. it's nuts yeah. I would, I would, i'm such a wimp i'd be like ah <laughs> the whole time i know that's true that's funny some i've people, seen it yeah some people got people hey, the last one wasn't bad though no it's good yeah, you need to great. I, I roasting you hard, but you're fine. Um, some people are smuggling in like drugs. You're like, can you smuggle me some yellow? Like, I really <laughs> need some yellow. This is crazy. They like burn like newspaper and then collect the soot. And then the soot, they like ash off into like this, put some baby oil in there. And then they get the, the machine of a cassette player, like toothbrush. It's wild, dude. Mm -hmm. It's sick. It's fucking hard. And that's like some genius shit. Yeah. Yeah. It's absolutely genius. And so like shout out like Freddie Negretti, who is still tattooing right now in LA. And like he really is kind of the godfather of the black and line, but or black fine line, black and gray. And he was also working alongside with Ed Hardy at the exact same time where these are, they're creating this brand new thing, you know? But, and so, I, you know, it, it just feels like a missed opportunity that younger people are doing so many black and gray tattoos and, like, they could just learn this really cool information and, like, go, actually, you can still get tattooed by Freddie Negretti. Mm -hmm. Like, go do that. Go hang out with all these old guys. Yeah. Like, why? They're, gonna, they're so old. <laughs> you know, they're, they're dropping all the time. I think it's super unfortunate that some people will only know Ed Hardy as, like, corny-ass clothing when yeah. he was, like, yeah, a yeah, fucking... Yeah. He's having his comeback, though. He's gonna yeah. die, and then everybody's gonna be like, damn. There, yeah. was, a, there was a really good... I don't know who made it. It's Christian Adige that fucked the shit up. There, there was right. a super good documentary. Worst designer. Yeah, the Vice one. Mm -hmm. I recommend that to everyone. I've seen it a Because that really puts you on to what it was really about. Yeah. And he's like, yeah, that shit was just, like, money. Like, Fav favorite know. part? Yeah. yeah. I saw that like He's like, I bought this building. Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah. He's like, it worked out all right. But yeah. even with the like the Chicano black and gray stuff, I mean, ten years ago, if you were if you didn't go to prison, you're gonna start some shit with that. Like you, not ten years ago is a little too recent. But Twenty, honestly, if you, you didn't see black and gray tattoos unless it came from somebody who was incarcerated and who learned it, and it was paid by the trade. You know what I mean? Um, but everything's changing. Tattoos are for everyone. It's totally okay. But. I'm not about to whip out some Japanese tattoos and like not know what the fuck I'm talking about. Yeah. You know what I mean? That would be yeah. absolutely nuts. <laughs> and and literally it. out of pocket. It, out it really, <laughs> it really w was like a shift though, because I remember even being like a teenager-ish, everyone was getting the boldest color shit ever. Yeah. 
And then it just tra slowly transitioned yeah. to now you rarely see people getting One of my favorite things tattoos. about traveling so much with this job is I see what's popular where. Yeah. Like in New York, it holds it down. It is traditional, bold, cross the room, bright colors, and it's sick as hell, and people specialize that. I don't even pack my colors when I go travel to LA. <laughs> like, I'm, not can, doing a, I'm not doing a color tattoo here. What, what's that. crazy, you can tell like what era hardcore motherfuckers grew up sure. in. Yeah. <laughs> With those the nautical stars. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. like, All right, man, you, yeah. you yeah. definitely listen to the Bane player. I, I can tell. to see a swallow on a collarbone. Yeah. I know that's oh, yeah. my sister oh, yeah. right there. <laughs> <laughs> or the, uh, the the ship that says homesick. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. and again, those are hundred year old You definitely listen to over my dead body. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Maybe they're not popular right this second. It was popular in the nineties, and then all those young kids are going to start getting. They actually already are like getting the nineties tattoo. It, it's oh, a thirty yeah. year but cycle. Yeah. Well, I mean, yeah, because that, that, like that's what you fuck with, real. Like you said, in the cycle of shit, that's what I fuck with. I got a script across my chest. <laughs> <Respect>. Fuck <you. laughs> Was it poison the whale lyrics? Uh, <laughs> armor for sleep. <laughs> Let's go! <laughs> Damn. We would have hung out. We all would have hung out. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> That's not why I'm here. <laughs> I actually think it's unfortunate that they don't even teach cursive anymore because it looks beautiful. I know. Yeah. Like, out, written out, that shit is so beautiful. Yeah, but dude. these fools don't even have chairs in their classroom. <laughs> like, there's, like, no nobody to teach the class. It's it's all broken. It's all pretty whack. Yeah. I mean, I still know all the cursive. I can get yeah. that shit off. I, I can get teach it off. you. Yeah. I can get it off. If I Definitely. don't know, I just scribble it. I mean, they start that shit. <laughs> I start... Cursive's, like, fourth grade. Like, that's yeah, early yeah. shit. Yeah. That's ingrained in there. But... Shit, earlier than fourth grade. Probably. Grade, probably yeah. with, with the, <laughs> the actual alphabet. Yeah. Yeah, because yeah. yeah, they gave you the trace sheets. Yeah. yeah. I wish they taught the um, and the Spanish and things like that the same way. Like, just start it right as yeah. an essential, mm -hmm. like, yeah, starting in seventh grade, I was like, I'm not, it's already too late. Dude, I'm like, in Texas and I don't really got my it. My like, mom's first language and I can't learn it now. Yeah. You know? yeah. <laughs> like, I mean, I lived in San Diego for like five years and I like barely caught on to some shit. Yeah. yeah. Like I could order get, order my burritos in Spanish and shit. Yeah. 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 It's hard yeah. to pick up it when you're older, there. you know, but yeah. if you were like in first grade, you would just pick it up. Yeah. yeah. That's why some people that live in a bilingual household just pick them both up very easily. Yeah. Because yeah, they're hitting like, them both equally. They get the illest jobs too off the string. Mm -hmm. There's a, like a neurological <laughs> study that shows if you want to retain information, do something um, physically intense afterwards, like not before, like take that cold shower afterwards. And I feel like that's just recess. And it's like, like, like <laughs> some of that just was like, <laughs> like just yeah. like really intense. But I retain a lot of the essential learning and history and all of the you know stuff they are teaching a nine-year-old versus high school because i was just on like carissa and mushrooms in high school <laughs> and i was like slowing that roll down <laughs> not like get to go streaming outside but they're getting real recess for kids too and i don't know why i'm talking about the public school system <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. you know what you know what i love a good shitty tattoo <laughs> Hell yeah. Respect. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I really love that shit with a motherfucker. That's like, some YOLO shit, truly. That's there for the yeah. experience, you not know for what the I'm fucking... Saying? Like, I don't trust you for real. You ain't got no shitty tattoos that you say. I said that. Like, I, I never, like, cover my shit up for yeah. real. Like, I got a few, you know what I'm saying? But, like, I remember them times. So. Yeah. I respect that. And this generation is kind of dying out, though, because mm. now there's a lot of people getting heavily tattooed in their 30s and 40s because... The stigma, like they thought they couldn't have a job, blah, blah, so mm. relatively. And it's really exciting to tattoo those people because they're so stoked and they know exactly what they want. And they get their entire legs covered in one year. <laughs> <laughs> Excuse? <laughs> and let you do whatever the fuck you want every week. <laughs> but it's sick, though. It's sick. And it's, uh, it, you know, you're getting cooler tattoos now than you would have at 19. I could show you this you can lose if this you want. Just lose it. <laughs> <laughs> What's wrong with that? You get, you get going in. It's, Deserves I've been getting respect. tattoos since I was 14. I just I know, I know. to get my legs tattooed. I know. We're doing some light roasting on a podcast here. And you and Miranda are both bailing on me, so I got to go. I know. Guys, yeah, no no shout out to Miranda, <laughs> actually. No <laughs> shout out to Rumors, Teresa. Y'all are both back. posers. I think we should spend the rest of the pod talking about your commitment issues and you can't <laughs> stay in Chicago. We came. We saw. We gave it our all. Yeah. No, but I'll, I'll miss you, but I'm glad you're I'll doing what around. you want to do. I don't stay anywhere too, too, too long. But you obviously, you talked about earlier, love to travel. I feel like, uh, what do you, what draws you so much to New York? Why do you like it so much? <laughs> you all right? You about to die? I <laughs> <laughs> went down the wrong way. Excuse me. I, I don't know you guys do cuts, but my voice sounds like this now. Nah. <laughs> Sorry, give me one second. No, this yeah. is a <coughs> Sorry, not even in the weeds. All right. 
Yeah. Where were we? So yeah, you got I it. feel like you you kept going back and now you're about to just live in New York. What what do you like so much about that Ooh, city? Ooh, you dropped my secret location. Oh, should I not say this? <laughs> no, uh, okay. Portland. But if, it, <laughs> if anyone uh, sees me in Portland, worry about me. I didn't sign up for that. Um, no, it's all good. I, I doubt anybody make it. I will we'll figure it out. But uh, <laughs> uh, We can cut it out. It's all good. It's all good. I could, yeah, we could have the cough, too, so it'll work. Yeah, uh, Yeah, no, so I've been traveling a lot to kind of find a bit of a loophole with being so new to tattooing and starting so much later in life. And the same way that music works, luckily, I've kind of gotten the opportunity to know people all across the country. And uh, I don't know if, like, the gatekeepers are tattooing will really want me to say this but shoot your shot man i've never i i like a tattooer be like hey it'd be great to work with you they'll be like dude come through and it works out great and for me right now while i'm still so early in my career that i just get this opportunity to work all over the place learn from so many people and at the same time i've been wanting to do this for 10 years i'm going to take full advantage of the fact that i get to travel as well oh yeah and we've been in a pandemic so catch me in a different city every couple weeks yeah that's love i think to to kind of play off what you said if you do it in the right way just shooting your shot is the best thing to do all the time, all the time. And, and, if you, in any situation if you at don't all. know all the but the For thing real. is some people just go about it in such the wrong way yeah. you still got to be like respectful yeah. about you know but in any situation you got to just go like shoot your yeah. shot see yeah. what's going to happen you yeah know? definitely and you got to be ready for it not to first, work out you, you know, know? Yeah. um i've always loved just the work speaks for itself like, don't worry. Like, the algorithm's always going to change on your ass. Like, <laughs> if you start stressing out because now I have to make reels or no one's liking my shit, you're not going to be working your full potential. And then when you do have, like, a prolific amount of art, like, you're continuing to put things out, not on a content base, not because I need a post today, but just because this piece needs to get done now. Like, people see it, man, and they respect it. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like people know what time it is with most artists. Absolutely. You know? yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It's that consistency. You got to have consistency. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. I'm sure I that's think music, all, too. Yeah. I think all four of us specialize in consistency. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to Teresa. Shout out to the Face yeah. Value Podcast. Yeah. That. Selfish I, plug. I, th <laughs> <laughs> I think what it is, too, is we're so subconsciously conditioned to be scared of being told no. Yeah. So yeah. you, like, hold back on so many things. Oh, it probably won't work out. They'll probably say no. You tell yourself these things where if you don't ask, you don't even know what the yeah. answer is. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. There's nothing wrong with asking fucking questions. Oh, Definitely. Motherfuckers be, getting, I, motherfuckers be getting scared to get embarrassed. They be yeah, getting embarrassed. Exactly. And do you want to work with someone that's like keeping that, you know? Yeah. Like they'd be like, no, I'm not going to help you. Yeah. Like, that, that, that's not your guy. It's my secret recipe. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> I invented yeah. this. Yeah. Really? Oh, I just be like, yo, like, it, that's what I was on for real. Yeah. You think I'm lame for what I like? That's what I was really on. You yeah. know what yeah. I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, yeah, I am leaving Chicago, which is such a bummer. I fucking love it here. It's really bittersweet. I have never left a city loving it still. I just feel like, you know, it's New York's been calling. It's an amazing place to be tattooing and the opportunities. Everyone's always visiting. I would love for people to come to me now instead of me gone every week, uh -huh. you know. Um, but I'm looking forward to the opportunity. It's definitely taking a bit of an L. <laughs> I'm gonna. It's, it's a huge transition, and doing it in my 30s now. It's straight up like, all right, I'm here, and you yeah. have no intention of leaving. Yeah. The thing yeah. is, too, I I think in bigger cities, it's probably different in suburbs, you know, middle America or whatever. Your 30s are still a time for you to grow. Oh, yeah, where where they used to be, you needed needed to settle yeah. down and do this. <laughs> like, if I was doing what I'm doing now, back where I grew up in Saginaw, Michigan, people uh -huh. would be like, you're fucking crazy. <laughs> but if you're in, like, Chicago, New York, yeah. whatever, yeah. Yeah. No, nobody gives a fuck, you yeah. know? Like, yeah. and, and at the end of the day, your age is never should have defined you. Yeah. You can do whatever you want Damn, whenever you want those hometown do. haters. Yeah. They're crazy. What are we talking about? Everyone if, knows. But if I was doing this, if I was doing this in Arlington, Texas right now, yeah. motherfuckers would be like... <laughs> I know. Okay. I know. <laughs> Shit, if I'll do it, it's a fucking Homewood. It's 3838. <laughs> I'm still shout out Ch San Antonio for anything. Anybody wants to get mad at me. Oh, wait. Not it's 4040. 40. That was a tight game. No, we're watching recaps right now. Oh, yeah, it's halftime. It's <laughs> halftime right now. <laughs> like, it's a real fast game. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Damn, yeah, right. <laughs> I just skipped six points. <laughs> yeah, it's still like eight minutes. The Spurs, the Spurs actually keep it up with them. Like Bulls actually have a hard time with the Spurs. I'm they rooting beat us for Timmy's season. team, man, and all the new boys. I did not know Tim Duncan is a. Uh 
Is they assisted He cubs. looks so cute these days too. He's all like put so together. Cute. He's he so got like cute. hair and shit. Right. <laughs> we all love Timmy. Recently, uh, I seen a I seen a little clip of like uh, Giannis talking about like what he want to do after the game. He was just like, I want to disappear and like I don't want people to know. I want to be. That's a Kawhi answer too. He was like, I want to be like Timmy. <laughs> well, <cool. laughs> I do not want to be perceived. Yeah, and, and they showed Timmy with his twist. He's I was like, damn, twist. Timmy got twisted. He looks cute. He's got his gray twist. Yeah. Nah, shout out to Spurs. Man, uh, pop the, fun, the fundamentals. <laughs> Nate's like, fuck. I that. think that's honestly <laughs> what they're trying to I think they're just trying to restart a whole new team and just like build from there because that's mm. it's, that's how they do it. Like, yeah, shout out to the yeah. goddamn Dallas Mavericks. Yeah, how what are we right talking now? about? How's that going? Fire. They're killing it. <laughs> they're doing great. Well, well, I, I, I want to say that, like, <laughs> hold on, before, before we transition, because I got to talk about Lulu too. Before we transition, I just want to say I've been on record on this podcast saying that, like, uh, Greg Popovich should run for president. Oh, he's so loved. He's so loved. Yeah, he's so cool, can though. Just like if, scream if anybody, at the other countries. If anybody is better at bringing different cultures together, <laughs> yeah. it's Greg Popovich. Yeah. You know? yeah. He's like, he, the conservatives love him. My dad, I, he's worshipped him. Oh, for real? Oh, dude, yeah, he's so worshipped. When he dies, that's what he's shutting down. I feel like Greg Popovich could bring this nation oh, together. Oh, Papa Prince. <laughs> that would be cute. Nah, he's he's on one. I heard he's a no. I'm, I'm sorry. It's a hot town gossip. <laughs> I heard he's a he's a bad patron at race, restaurants. Ooh, so. I'm sure. He's yeah, a, yeah, he's yeah, a dickhead. Like, why would that be new news? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I mean, they, yeah, Lulu been going crazy. He dropped the 40 piece yesterday. Yeah. Lulu, what's well, new? Too, er- too early in the season for me to. Yeah, up. yeah, never too early. Yeah, I don't care till the playoffs start. Christmas. Well, nah, we got, but we got to. I got to see how it's going. The thing is, I have to keep tabs on every other team to see how my team going fair against them. Yeah, you know what yeah. I'm saying. I mean, poorly probably. <laughs> <laughs> poorly. You think they're gonna win the championship? They're not gonna do poorly. I'm gonna give them like four years and we'll be back up on top. Yeah, I say we. And I say we as if we Bulls, could get to if but, the Bulls can make it to the second round, I'd be happy. Dude, I just want to go to games in like April. You know what I mean? I want yeah. them to still be playing by then. <laughs> yeah, yo. I feel like they could make it to the second round. That'd be enough. I'd be like, good. They did well. Yeah. Anybody but, anybody but the Warriors. <laughs> I think that is like the American motto we can go with. I know. Well, they, they got us. us. We are almost in the finals, baby. They got <laughs> us up out of there. You're doing it's us been, dirty. Yeah, you're talking all this shit about the Mavericks. We were almost in the finals for real. You were almost they were. in the almost. finals. Almost. For real. <laughs> yeah, because of because of Golden State. Dude, you just missed it. You were so close. I was so close. Close yeah, to Lu- y'all. Lulu can't do it. Lulu can't do it by himself. I won't even defend real. that. <laughs> That's all right. Isn't yeah. it funny how we all thought like Brooklyn was going to take it? Yeah, yeah. When after it first For happened, I'm like, they year, trash. Yeah. And then nobody played. That shit is crazy. Is KD still on Brooklyn? Yeah, yeah. KD's still on is he there. Playing? Still yeah, KD playing? But, like, uh, they got Ben Simmons' bum ass right now, yo. Ben Simmons back after two years. He's been sitting out for mental reasons. Hell yeah. It'd be tight to do some uh, basketball merch. Dream yeah, job. Yo. How crazy would that be? For Same, yo. Like, if I could if I could do a, a design for the booze, Dude. that'd be Yeah, like, 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 do, like, a city edition jersey. Dude. We oh need my. something because vintage sportswear is so fucking amazing. Yeah. yeah. All the old vintage designs are just yeah. so yeah. Yeah. so yeah. limited now. Yeah. Because yeah. yeah. it's I all know, those stinky-ass yeah. 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 fans wearing yeah. the shirts down. To the people. The Jorge just fucked up. <laughs> Jorge just came through and dropped me a bag, yo. Like, yeah. Mad bullshit, Honestly. Yo. Like that's fair. <laughs> Staring us in the face right now. <laughs> yeah, no, Jorge is the king of that shit. He'll just be sending me that's links. Like a, that's like a old dream. ass weird Dallas Mavericks yeah. denim varsity jacket. Oh, <laughs> no one should have gave this man Depop. <laughs> <laughs> It'd be like three in the morning. He's like, look at this jacket. Like, Bro, what are you on right now? He's like Depop. Clear. The <laughs> yeah, he's the king of finding ill shit. Yeah. Um, yeah, before we uh, before we wrap up, I want to touch on this for a little bit. What do you um, what do you think is going on in Texas where they produce so much good music? It's kind of <laughs> fucked up all across Art. all genres. Like, uh, yeah, we hold it down. It's just so fucking big. It's like literally yeah. like advantage. It's like yeah. literally. Yeah, no we do space. have the yeah. it's big as hell. I mean, you could have that argument right now because like Santa Cruz is just having like a moment to like. There's areas. Yeah. Chicago was on one ten years ago. It, it really San is. San Diego's like a, having a moment too. Yeah, bro. it's a temperature change, and also it's unprecedented because people are moving so much now because we can connect with our friends everywhere. So you can start this like super band, you know, like 
the homies Narrowhead and stuff like that. It's like they're yeah. all over the place, you yeah. know, and they've all been in other other bands and um, they're killing it though. And I'm super grateful. I know, to keep it's asking great. To do it's, art. It's, yeah. <laughs> I'm glad to do the bands. It's, be- it's my beautiful homies to see. Yeah. I yeah. see them every three months. <laughs> well, they, they've been touring like much. nine. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, but I was at, yeah. I wasn't doing this uh, narrowhead art, but just like the homies in general, just to see them killing it and Texas Crew asking me to help out. Yeah. Always yeah. down. Yeah, it's cool because I think that back in the day, like we always talk about internet and stuff, it used to be so regional. Like you, the time I spent in San Diego, that's why I knew about like Kylesa and shit. I would have never known that band if I wasn't. You would have known about San Kylesa. <laughs> I don't think so. They, they, they would play all the time. Massive, like, yeah. Yeah, but I, I saw them like too much. But I saw them yeah. when there was like twenty five. Yeah, people true, there. true. You know what I mean? Right, right, right. Because right, San Diego and Tijuana are like fucking next yeah. to each other. And no lie, Austin is a little nuts though. Like it is one of those cities. Arguably, in New York, you could say Chicago the same, but uh, but they're not the same size. So you can really wake up one morning, like I did in March, and I'm like, I didn't think I was gonna see a 70 year old gang of four today. You know? <laughs> yeah, that's crazy. Like, it, that's some Austin shit for sure. And yeah, I've seen for real. so many bands like that. I've become almost desensitized to it, where I'm just like, oh yeah, I definitely saw Slayer in a 200 like person audience. Like, yeah, what yeah. The, like you know what I mean? Like crazy shit like that. Yeah. But uh, Austin's a Fuck with Austin, man. Te- the Lord is testing me right now. <laughs> I'll be in Austin. <laughs> I'm still leave that one a little dead aired because <laughs> I'm about to spend some time there. Oh, oh no! I know. It's all good. They, I love my family. They hate it too. <laughs> I heard all like I don't know. Austin has good skate spots. So it's yeah, a skate city. We got, all, we got all kinds of fun stuff. Uh, what, what's the shop there? No comply or something? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No comply in Technar. Yeah. Yeah. What's, the, what's the park, though, that's right next to it? For I don't know the name yeah. of the park. Yeah, one of my Michigan homies moved there, like, because we all, like, dispersed. Like, I went to San Diego. He went there. Like, everyone left Michigan because the weather's fucking terrible. Yeah. But then you realize, like, I don't know, as you get older, I'm like, man, Michigan was sick. But yeah. when, when you're younger and just want to skate, Michigan's not it. Because <laughs> fucking seven months out of the year, it's Is like, Is it humid shit. as shit? No, it's just, like, winter forever, oh, you know right, what I mean? right, right, yeah. And, like, the city I grew up in, we didn't even get a skate park till I moved. Yeah, yeah. so crazy. Same here. Same. We got a skate park when I moved in yeah, Arlington, we, Texas. Yeah. We had a skate park at Oak Park till I was growing in That's crazy. I mean, I'll just roll around and stuff, but it was wild moving to the Midwest and seeing all the indoor parks. I, like, never even thought about it. I was just like, I never thought uh, indoor. <laughs> like, I that's think actually, like, uh, I feel like that's less of a thing in the Midwest, right? No, there's a hella because it's so cold. I mean, yeah, there's, like, there's hella Hansel now. Here, there's hella like, now. Church in St. Louis. Well, the when I was a way. kid, it wasn't for real. Like, it was just crush for real. That was it. And crush as far as fuck. Yeah. yeah. It's like not even feasible. But there is one. Um, I know it's funny because a lot of people from Texas have like Houston beef. But Houston, ha- Houston has like a yeah. famous indoor park. I've never I forgot the name Houston. of it. H Town, baby. What? Houston has like a famous indoor park, and it's just yeah, funny that like Houston like- would have a fucking indoor skate park. Yeah, Houston's slept on, dude. It's sick. So sick. Houston it really is. Dur- sick. Darrell Stanton lived there for a minute. Yeah, right? he did. Yeah. yeah, he skated for Dark Star and Rick. There, I remember that. Then he got unreal. And he went crazy. <laughs> yeah, he went crazy. People used to always say I look like him. I, there was like this like Rick to ad that used to be in Trans World when I was in. Uh, like what people? Uh, <laughs> like oh, so I look like him because I'm a black skateboarder. <laughs> like, oh, you said it. <laughs> 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 like, no one. He was killing it there. You're like fuck it, I yeah. The over nose blown on Clipper. Ooh. He was, yeah. He Ooh, actually 62, dude, 62. When I uh, <laughs> when we were doing the brand back in the day, he fucking DM'd me for shit. Sick. And I was like, this is crazy, dude. Yo, that's like, Ill. What brand stuff are you doing? I was just doing uh me like fuck forever ago. Now like seven years ago. Before it was easy to make apparel. Me and yeah. a couple friends were making it. We were doing a brand. We were in like 10, 11 shops across the country, like doing pretty good. <laughs> 10, and, 11 years old? No, we were like <laughs> twenty-six. But we were in like ten that's or eleven tight. shops. Like we That's had shit cool. in Portland, Shoot California. Your shot, right? Um, yeah. We sold at Uprise, obviously. I see uh, that box of Gildans up there. Yeah, that's face value. <laughs> that's face value, <laughs> baby. Uh, but yeah, Darrell, Darrell Stan just like DM me one day. He's like, "Your shit is fire," and then he was like, actually wearing it on Instagram and shit. That's, that's tight. That's yeah. very cool. It's a weird full circle when you see that. I had like a shirt appear on like the Eric Andre show once. I was like, "What?" And someone sent me which one? Uh, years and years ago. Uh, okay. Yeah, I can't even. I can't even tell you now. Uh, but yeah, that's cool. Like the apparel stuff, I mean, design, it goes into kind of the same thing with tattooing. It's it's this reach, you know what I mean? And it's like a, I was a part of that chapter in that part of time, you know what I mean? Or that yeah. person's part mm-hmm. of time. And maybe there's a selfishness in that with art, but like truly it's just being sick to be able to connect with that many people while 
I love my life, you know? Yeah. You, like, I don't know if you've ever thought of this, but so vintage clothing is never going to go away at this point. People are always going to like old Things shit. Things will just turn into vintage, yeah. You, yeah. Some of the shit you've done in like 20 years, you'll might randomly see somebody wearing that shit. Yeah. 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 And you'll be like, oh, damn, I designed that shirt. Yeah, you know it's already I mean? really, really weird because most hardcore shows I go to at this point, someone has like... You know how many of those fucking of candy those shirts I've seen in the city? I'm like, Jesus <laughs> Christ. It makes me not want to wear my shit. Yeah, there's that. Yeah, like, that's why I didn't get it. I was like, man, I don't <laughs> even know. <laughs> I appreciate it. But yeah, it's nice to see that too. So that show happened and then we had the pod the Friday. I think that show was like a Wednesday. Yeah. Did I rolled we? up to the bar. All y'all are wearing your candy candy. I was not. I was no, not. No, no it's not what happened. Uh, <laughs> I was not what happened. I probably I had my shit on. He had his I probably definitely had my shit on. It's okay. I'll give you the homie. It was funny because he had his on. Steve came over, had his on. I think L had hers on. I was like, y'all are doing way too much. <laughs> they were that That's good, though. Day. Oh, yeah, they were good, dude. It was sick, yeah. My no, you killed Jason that design. The, my friend Jason did that yeah. like, Rolling Stone one. Yeah, that's, that's the what I got. That's the what I got. Yeah, it's yeah. tight. I feel like if you go to a show in Chicago and it's a show you know a bunch of your friends are at, you got to ice the shirt for like four months. <laughs> yeah, I, I You, you got to just chill. I don't get